This is the start of our video for the Fax Celesta, which is our flow cytometer. I'm just going to go over some um, general setup and startup things here, along with maybe some troubleshooting at some point later on. Um, so this is our Celesta here. It's pretty simple to start. There is a green button here, and this is what we're going to push on to turn on the system. You do not have to touch anything else. Once the system is turned on, you'll see that there is a green status bar here that needs to be illuminated. If the status bar is red for some reason, then that's a problem and we can't run the instrument. You also want to make sure that it is in HTS mode um, and not anything else. And then you want to go and check down here. You want to make sure that your waste can is not more than half full or I would empty that down the drain. It can go straight down the drain because it is nothing but sheath fluid, bleach, and inoculated samples. So once you do that, you can take some fresh bleach that we keep over here and you can pour it in the bottom of the waste canister and then it is good to go. Then you also need to check our sheath fluid levels here. Ideally, this never needs to get below one third full. Ideally, half is perfect. If it gets below that, then there's a risk of it running air through the system, which is a problem. If you take off either of these tops here, especially the sheath fluid top, it's going to alarm. So then you're going to have to push the alarm button here to silence it. And once you start it up and connect it again, you hit the alarm button to um, make it stop. And then you hit the restart button here to start the flow again. If you look to the right of the table, you'll notice this is where our sheath buffer is kept. So if you need to refill your sheath fluid, you do so out of this container. This is a 1x buffer solution. The fax clean for cleaning the instrument is nothing more than 10% bleach in distilled water. So if you need to make some more up, then that's how you make it. And our log sheets are on the wall for logging things in. Our little cooler over here is where the beads stay and so whenever you're not using the beads, they need to be kept cold. There's only ever one bead lot in here, so you don't have to worry about cross-contaminating the beads. And usually the current beads that are being used are going to be kept in this little um, side shelf right here. And here we keep our cleaning agents, the Contrad and the DI water. I recommend that everybody replace the DI water before they start in case it's older, since we don't know. In order to prepare the standard for the day, we're going to use this pipette, which has 350 microliters on it. You will need to bring your own tips from your lab. They're not guaranteed. And to 350 microliters of sheath fluid, we're going to add one drop of beads, and then you're going to vortex that solution. So it's safe. There's no biologicals and no chemicals in this, but this needs to be vortexed before you get ready to run the sample. You also want to take a look at the entire system and make sure that there's no air bubbles in the fluidic system. So check all the lines. Just generally look everything over that there's fluid in the plenum. If you're not sure, you can tilt it and you can see a little bit of that fluid kicking up. And that way you know that there's plenty of fluid in this and that it's not dry. This is just sheath fluid. That's all that's in here. And this is just the line that's the filter through it. So. If there's ever any problems, these are all quick connects here. If there's air in the lines, you can disconnect via the quick connect and bleed the sheath fluid out to pull the air out of the system. The whole system here is manual, so you'll need to make sure that you push run when you want to run the sample or if you're cleaning it, and then hit standby when you're finished because it won't automatically stop unless you hit the standby button. This is in run mode right here where it's running and most all the cleaning solutions and standards are run on the low setting. However, for some very low negative samples, you might need medium or high. If you're calibrating and it doesn't calibrate the first go around, you can try it on the medium setting, making a double batch of beads. So that's two drops of beads in 750, or 700 microliters of sheath fluid on a medium setting and sometimes that works if there's a little clog in the line. In the corner of the room we keep the concentrated sheath fluid. This is in separate containers here that we order. And so in order to make fresh sheath fluid if needed, 
you need to pull a new container out and fill it to this line with DI water. It's got a set amount of sheet fluid in the bottom. You fill it to the line and that's what you pour into the large carboy should you need to make more sheath fluid. Please make sure that you do this if you use all of the sheath fluid so that the next user has plenty to use. Now we've logged onto the computer, which once you've completed the training, you will get the password for, remembering that this is not on the internet in any way, shape, or form. So you have to bring a flash drive. The software is the BD Fax Diva software. And that's what we're going to open up to initially start to calibrate the instrument. This is the default that Diva gives you when you set it up to begin with, and you will start to set up your experiment in this. That will be a separate training that you will work with your lab mates on or the ICBR course with. In order to calibrate the instrument for the day, you're going to go to the cytometer and CST, and that's going to switch modes for you. And it's going to show you here that the baseline was run, that has to be done every six months, but that the cytometer performance, which is CST, was is out of date. It needs to be done daily. So if somebody runs the instrument before you and leaves it on, you don't have to do it for the day. But if you're the first person to run it for the day, you have to rerun it. So we go over here to select configuration, and this is where we check what run we're on. I would say most users here use the BD default, which is the copy to version right here. This is normally selected. If you have a specific size seven setting, you'll need to change that. So you would click that here, you would change your mirrors and set the configuration, and it's gonna remind you to change the mirrors. We will have a separate training specifically for size seven. If you need to use that, you can contact me. However, if you're done with size seven, then it's your responsibility to switch back to the BD default, which is what most users use, and change the mirrors back. So again, we set the configuration and then it's ready to go. If you need to check anything, you can always select each one of these individual laser lines and you can check to see where all the mirrors are. I'll show you in a minute where the mirrors are located. This is where you would go to check the mirrors. You pop this and just turn it to open and all three of these should match the configuration that are on the computer. If you're not sure, you can just scroll in and check and make sure that everything matches accordingly. Once you're finished, you just hit the OK button. And so we're on the proper configuration. The lot number is always going to be the same lot number because I only ever have one lot of beads there and it's good for 2024 expiration here. So when you get ready to run, you're gonna load your tube and then you're gonna click run to run the CST. If there's ever a problem, we're gonna to go to the reports section. That's gonna tell us about how the instrument is performing. It's okay if for some reason the instrument fails a couple times. Sometimes it's just in the software or it just doesn't read the beads right. So I always recommend remake the beads or make a double batch of beads and run it on medium instead of low to see if you can get it to pass. If there's any problems where it's repeatedly failing, like up here where we had a laser issue, you can see here there's problems. I tell people to please take screenshots of this and let me know and I can contact our engineers to see what's wrong. But normally after everything passes, it'll look good and you're ready to start your run. In order to load your tubes, we've got a swing arm here that just swings and the tube fits up here snugly at top. So when you get ready to load your sample, you'll pull the arm out and switch it. You'll put the arm underneath and that's when you can go to the mode over here and hit run and then it's gonna start running your sample. Ideally, you wanna start getting fluid into the system before you actually have it start recording the events. And always remember, if you're gonna switch samples, you have to turn this off manually. It never stops on its own. So you hit the standby button here, and that's gonna stop it. When you're finished with the system, we have a setting here on how to clean it. So you need to program about 20 minutes in to be able to do your proper cleaning. So we're gonna run Contrad and then DI and then Fax Clean, which is nothing but 10% bleach and DI water. 
and then more DI for five minutes on the slow mode. Then you're going to leave a sample of DI sitting on the instrument, no more than half, full. And that's what we do just to leave it. And at that point, you can shut your computer down and you can turn off the instrument.